about the Pakistan and Oman's bilateral relations in the health issues and other bilateral relations. Let's start with, I'm delighted to be, to be with my brothers here in the Islamic Republic of Pakistan. I'm grateful for the Pakistani government and public for organizing this very important WHO regional meeting, our 64th session of the Eastern Mediterranean region. The reception we've had and the generosity of the government of Pakistan and the public was touching. And uh, I congratulate, congratulate my colleague, the, Minister of, the Federal Minister of Health and, Co and uh, Regulation of Pakistan for her election as the president of this session. Uh, yesterday, of course, we were delighted that the session was opened by the Honorable uh, President of uh, Pakistan, and his presence gave all of us uh, the encouragement and the increased the momentum to do more toward health care. Oman and Pakistan relationships, of course, in all aspects are historical and very deep-rooted. And they lasted the tests of turbulence in the region. We continued to be stable. We continued to uh, uh, cooperate. We continued to discuss several issues uh, between the two countries. Oman, by the way, is the closest Arabic country to Pakistan geographically. And I hope it is closest in many other aspects as well and uh, the friendship and the admiration and the relationship at all levels between the two countries is great. Health system in Oman of course benefited a lot from uh, our brothers and sisters uh, from the Islamic Republic of Pakistan uh, from human resources point of view and we uh, aim and hope to have more. I would talk briefly about the cooperation first and then briefly I'll talk about our healthcare system in Oman. To start with also I would like to congratulate uh, our brothers in Pakistan for launching the day before yesterday the treatment for hepatitis uh, viruses which is a milestone in, in uh, uh, healthcare and which will cure not only help cure many patients who are suffering from these viruses which are unfortunately uh, known to have very dangerous consequences. Secondly, also, I uh, would like to con congratulate the government and the public of Pakistan for the very significant improvement in polio eradication. Over the last few years, the commitment from the Pakistani government, the cooperation from all provinces in Pakistan helped, of course, uh, toward uh, reducing the number of cases, because as we know, uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan, unfortunately, the only two countries in the world who still have cases of polio. And with the effort they've been doing over the last few years, we are hoping and aiming to eradicate polio from our eastern Mediterranean region. Oman contributed, of course, toward the eradication of uh, polio. Uh, 2014, there was a meeting in the region, and uh, I represented my government, and there was uh, a lot of input from us, both technical and otherwise, and uh, the, the results of that, the fruitful result, we started to see now. Uh, as also, I've discovered the healthcare in, in Pakistan is progressing, especially after the introduction of the health insurance, which will cover most needs of those who cannot afford it will be covered. This is a, an, a great and important step. We all know that healthy nation is a productive nation. So health, productivity, and life, you cannot separate them. Sure. Uh, so the, 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 the important of also having this meeting in Pakistan, many of us, including myself, unfortunately, are the first visit. And we were pleasantly surprised by how beautiful the country is, of course, we knew how nice the people were. We interacted with our colleagues and friends and brothers from Pakistan before. Uh, but also, Islamabad is very nice, peaceful, quiet, scenery city. So uh, in addition to, to, to us uh, sort of uh, having the annual meeting of our region, WHO, I think we've discovered many things about a neighboring country, and I'm hoping to see more of it. In Oman, health care before His Majesty Sultan Qaboos took over in 1970 was almost non-existing. We had primitive health centers and hospitals. And our health indicators 
which uh, people in healthcare will recognize were very poor. I'll give you an example. In 1970, 7071, His Majesty uh, took over in 1970. Our life expectancy in Oman, i.e., the majority of people do not exceed the age of 50. So life expectancy in 1970 was 50, 51. Today, the life expectancy jumped from 50 years to 77 years. The death in children and newborn was very, very high in 1970s. Uh, it was about 20 plus percent of babies who were born before 1970 did not see their fifth birthday. They were dying from malaria, tuberculosis, other infectious diseases. Today, that number, instead of about 200 per 1,000 death, today it's less than 9.5. Uh, of course, in all other indicators of health, uh, health issues, there's tremendous improvement. And I'm proud and glad to say that Oman was rated by many UN agencies as the fastest growing country in human development. Of course, this would not have happened without help from friends, allies, and organizations such as our brothers and friends in Pakistan. Discuss the role of the WHO for this conference. What is the role of the WHO? Uh, WHO, of course, uh, there are several regions, and our region called the Eastern Mediterranean region, which encompasses 22 countries, ex basically from Afghanistan to Morocco. And uh, we uh, have annual meeting, usually our headquarters in Cairo, but uh, there are occasions where the meeting is hosted by a country like our brothers in Pakistan this time. We hosted it in Oman 2012. Of course, WHO considered to be the reference for healthcare worldwide. All the policies and regulation uh, are either set by or adopted or approved by WHO. So the importance of WHO, especially in our region, is extremely high. Uh, this meeting in Pakistan will concentrate on issues uh, that uh, are important to all the countries in the region. Unfortunately, it's a fact also that our region, the Eastern Mediterranean, have the highest number of countries with conflict, with natural disasters, with poverty, with immigration, with people displaced because of conflicts. So the need for the WHO and the countries that are peaceful to cooperate, to help other countries and the public in these countries is huge. And this is one of the issues I raised today uh, and I'm very passionate about. In healthcare, we should be an entry for peace and security. We should be actually participating indirectly to make the world more peaceful and pleasant to live in. So that's one issue we'll discuss here. Of course, we've mentioned about the communicable diseases, infectious diseases, and the progress in hepatitis uh, treatment, in polio eradication, in malaria is very obvious, but we'll also, WHO, with the technical support for the regional countries, will strengthen that. One of the issues which we will, which we always discuss and we will, all will continue to discuss is what, what is called non-communicable diseases. These are unfortunately, in the past, they were known to be diseases of rich countries and the Western societies, but not anymore. Diabetes, cardiovascular or heart disease, cancer, uh, respiratory diseases are very common in our region. And unfortunately, because of certain practices, smoking, lack of exercise, very bad diet in certain areas, especially with high uh, intake of sugar. These diseases are an increase and they are very costly for both the individuals and the countries. They are diseases for life. So the person is suffering all their life. Firstly, secondly, the countries will need to provide treatment lifelong, which is very costly. The good thing that 40% of these diseases, diseases can be prevented by modifying our lifestyle, 40%. So what I'm trying to say to the public, health is the responsibility of each and every one of you. At home, at school, the workplaces, wherever you are. Health education and uh, information are available everywhere, but we need to look after our, our health. WHO is uh, definitely taking the leading role in this. 
in Oman, like many other countries, including Pakistan, we have a high-level committee uh, to compact non-communicable diseases. We uh, are working to achieve the WHO Sustainable Development Goal related to health by 2030, and uh, we have technical support from WHO. So these meetings, annual meetings, there are so many things in the agenda that are important for each country. And we try to concentrate on issues that will improve the living standard for everybody. And we take also into consideration the country's population, geographical variation, uh, their economic situation, so that we don't mix things that are not similar. And uh, this is our second day. And the organization, honestly, I'm not flattering my brothers and sisters in Pakistan, but it's been great and uh, everybody is delighted to be here. Uh, one uh, thing uh, I would like to ask you, this is a very important thing, that uh, Pakistan Television has an, its only English channel, its uh, PTV World English channel, and uh, some comments, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, providing a role for the health issues and the other issues, and WHO is uh, uh, communication with us and also in the coordination with us for mm. the health programs and other programs with PT World English Channel. Uh, some sentence uh, please give us uh, about the uh, uh, English Channel. Okay. Well, to start with, the, uh, yeah, the, or the role of import, the role of uh, the, the media in healthcare is extremely important. They are our partner to deliver the message to the public whether it's in Oman, in Pakistan, in the United States, uh, all types of media, the social media, TV, and newspapers, and there is lots of cooperation between health sector and the social media. What I want people who are listening in this, in your uh, English uh, watching, your English uh, speak, speech, speaking TV channel, uh, as I said before, I'm grateful to be in Pakistan and thankful to uh, the Pakistani government and the public for organizing this very important 64th session of our regional WHO meeting. The hospitality we received is great. Last night we had a wonderful cultural night with, uh, it's called the color of Pakistan, with various dances from different parts of Pakistan. Everybody wanted actually to stay longer and it was beautiful. Go back to health. I read, I truly need to re-emphasize that each one of us in whichever field, wherever they are, is responsible for health. We all know smoking kills and we need to stop it. We all know that non-communicable diseases, cancer, diabetes, heart disease, respiratory disease, majority of it related to our lifestyle. Therefore, I'm urging everybody to exercise as much as they can, minimum 30 minutes a day, to watch what they eat, reduce their sugar and uh, salt intake uh, to stop smoking. There's no question about it. It's a killer. And the governments and the health organizations will do their level best to give the right information firstly, to provide the tools for diagnosis and treatment. But who wants to be sick? Nobody. So it's in your hand. You are the one who can make your life healthier and better. We can only provide you with the, the, the information, we can provide you with medication, we can uh, uh, open hospitals and health centers. Let me go back to Oman briefly. We have a very strong primary health care where it is accessible to all the public, it's free of charge, and it is the focal point for managing all our diseases. And this, I think, made the healthcare system in Oman one of the best worldwide. And we are ready and happy to share with our uh, friends and brothers in Pakistan all our experiences. We learn from each other. These meetings are not just for appearance in the media, but we learn a lot from each other's experience. We share these experiences, and uh, there are lots of cooperation between different countries in the region. I've mentioned the effort regarding the eradication of polio in Pakistan and Afghanistan. That, without the very high level commitment from the Pakistani government, would not have happened. And all of us in the world are grateful for them to say, yes, Pakistan will eradicate polio, but they need the help of everybody in Pakistan.
everybody needs to be a health minister in Pakistan and in Oman everywhere. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you very much. You Thank you. Thank you very much. And as I said, it's a beautiful city, Islamabad, and uh, we definitely will come back and uh, thank you again for our brothers in Pakistan for hosting the meeting. Thank you.